Greetings, my fellow freedom love the sovereign thinkers. Thank you for tuning in to the LL3 Podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful swampy mangroves of South Florida. And today's date is Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. Yes, election day in the United States. The first ballot count should be starting a little bit after 7 p.m. And uh, I'm just wondering how many people are going to be jumping off of buildings if their person they elect for president doesn't win. <laughs> well, well, well. That will be, you know, that'll be like the talk of the night, talk of the town, of course. And even my condolences go out to the victims in Vienna, Austria. I got uh, read about that, the, the post, something like that on Facebook yesterday about what happened in Vienna, the shootings, the mass, they call it the terrorist, they call it a terrorist attack, and I haven't really heard anything of the latest, they claim maybe ISIS related, I'm not so sure, Islam is terrorist, so um, I've got to do a little more reading on it, and of course they're going to have the, they have the lockdown there as well, they're doing second lockdowns around Europe, Germany, France, and um, of course Austria, it's insane. And I know, too, that um, many of the um, National Guards are um, deployed, ready to go. If there's any riots that break out, Lord, Lord willing. Because one thing we got to know for sure is nothing more than manufactured or socially engineered events. You got some good folks out there are peaceful protesters, and you got criminals. Always gonna have expect higher guns. I talked about this even the time when they're protesting on George Floyd. Chit chat with some of the kid people out there, including the young kids. Will beware of the agent provocateurs and plants. So, uh, citizen journalists, do yourselves a favor. I'm very pleased a lot of you are doing it, posting good information out there. The facts. Not all protesters are criminals. So. Um, Hopefully when you have that chance, do it again. I would love to see all the videos. You can send it to me directly. Follow, hit me on Twitter and Facebook. So um, that would be great because I, like I always enjoy watching those things because I like to get the real information, not from bobblehead corporate media. So um, without further ado, I'm going uh, to be doing a little um, article by James Rappaport, John Rappaport from nomorefakenews.com. And uh, what the hell was that? Okay, well, I know what I gotta do here is uh, I gotta put this on silence. I'm gonna right now. Airplane mode. Always expect to hit get like messages and all that. I'm on my phone, but I got a new phone. It's better than the one I got before, so I can't really complain. And um, it gives me a little more few extra goodies to play with. So I'm, I'm using that to invest, not just uh, personal use, but sharing information on the run. So. Um, Let's just check this out here by James Rappaport by No More Fake News. It says here, Democrats and Socialists are now one. And this is what he has to say here. The Democratic Par- Democrat Party has become the Socialist Party. Aided by a, a compliant, compliant press, academia, a vast army of bureaucrats, and various violent street groups, the takeover is complete. What, def- what definition of socialism should we apply to the Democrat Party? The only one that counts. Top-down elite power parading as justice and fairness for all. This has always been the socialist con. Big government will be kind. Big government will be nice. Big government cares. Big government will take care of us. Big government is creating a better world. That's a total wet dream when you look at that, my friends. If we need it proof, this mask is false and grotesque. We have it now in the form of COVID operation. The constraints on freedom, the lockdowns, the business closures, the economic destruction. This has been a silent coup. Trump is unwilling to see it and admit responsibility. He focuses on the recovery. Biden, to the degree that he can focus on anything at all, wants more constraints and lockdowns and economic devastation in the form of a nightmare federal plan. Remember, if you watch the last debate, he supports mandatory mask order. So what does that say about Joe Biden? 
He's against the 13th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution entitled Involuntary Servitude. Jim Crow on steroids. But I'll continue on here. Socialists, like other tyrannical forces, have always created crises, which then required humanitarian solutions that turned out to mean to mean control. We the people become, we control, we control the people. Yes, your business had to close because COVID, but we will offer you aid. Fostering this dependence as if it were ultimate kindness has always been part of the socialist playbook. Life's good and, and feels good until a manufacturer crisis comes along. Citizens go about their business under the socialist tent, absorbing the government perks and the nice ties while they pay higher taxes until the government lights up the danger sign and then all bets are off. Now we must enforce certain rules to protect you, the people. Now we must make you shelter in place. Now we must. COVID is the first time most Americans have experienced a hammer to blow to the head from the government so they don't understand their prior years of softening up socialism light, where really the prelude to and an integral part of this shock. Although many Republicans are helping to enforce the lockdown cur- uh, culture and the new normal, Democrats are leading the way. This is their moment. This is what they've been yearning for. Look at the skies. Look at how clear they are. Now that they've shut down so many manufacturers, it's wonderful. We couldn't force this with climate change, but COVID has been a miracle. The environment is safer. We're proved, we've proved that modern life is a vast corruption that can only be cured by shutting it down. Government money, bail out the people, will keep us going. Finally, we're operating on a fairer footing. We're all in this together. Of course, it's bribes, you know, and um, don't get me wrong, I'm on individuals, I believe in safety nets, but not charity. So, um, I'll just leave it at that, but it's what we really want us to depend on them. And that's very dangerous. One delusional piled on another. Unless derailed, greater delusions are to come. For example, equal opportunity will morph into equality of outcome. Every person will have the exactly the same economic status. If this sounds impossible, well, that's the definition of delusion. In truth, over time, equality would come to mean equivalent slavery and dependence for all, except for those who are running the whole freak show or pretend to be the socialist messiahs. They and their cronies and enforcers will own the animal farm and all the animals. Great book by George Orwell, by the way. In no, par- in no small part, the training ground for this absurd new normal has been the education system. Its premise of non-education is you don't need to think, you just need to feel. If you wish and feel the world can be, be a better place, you're educated. Now you must hitch that wagon to certain prescribed movements and groups and ideology that have a way to make your dreams come true. The first of these is called socialism. And since these students can't think, they buy this palliative. They believe this is, this is an honorable rebellion against the status quo. They're completely unaware that they're actually joining the extreme extension uh, and expansion of the status quo. Top-down control of life. Millions of naive American Democrats and centrist Republicans can't possibly imagine they are part of this operation. They can't imagine it because they refer to their own basic impulses and motives, and they know these impulses are sincere and good. But aligning their simple motives with real-world politics and seeing how that works out isn't an exercise they're capable of performing. They can't step back and analyze the con. They're just feeling... And if it feels right, it must be right. 
They're crawling on their hands and knees up to hundreds of stone steps to a vast cathedral where they know their wishes can come true. The high priest have made sure the stained glass windows are washed. The grand organ is in tune, and the organist is playing a slow, solemn figure. Minions are passing out aims to one and all, while at the same time, collectors are rank ranking in donations far in the access of the charitable bailouts. Just as once upon a time, John D. Rockefeller handed out shiny dimes to poor children. The Rockefellers, godfathers of socialism, one of the ten of the ten thousand facts they don't teach in school. Well, well, well. What do you guys say about that, folks? <laughs> I can't blame. Absolutely correct. I know many of you do recall I did a narrated article about 150 years of socialism. It happened during like the Lincoln administration. Abe Lincoln was a mercantilist. So, just a big example, when government knows best, it turns to manure. And I always like to say prefer to read the book The Law by Frederick Bastet. Great stuff. He forewarned about the French people about their government going in the wrong direction. And we need to heed that warning today. Not just by him, but even many other the founding fathers warned us about big government. And we don't care how they do it in other places. If you, if you, if you, if you want to go there, go, move. Don't, just, don't bring your garbage around me because it's not going to fly. If you want to be a government dependent, get a bar palm oil of soap. Say I love pop. real people, real men and women love palm olive. All right, this is how I look at things, and I'm expecting when the global. How about when the global when come the global reset happens? Lord forbid, man, those people that get in those handouts, they're the ones who are going to be screaming and blaming the white man and capitalism for their problems. Forget about it. Look in the mirror. We all have issues. We all have our pitfalls. I've been blessed. I am taking anything for granted, okay? But many people out there need, need to step up and say no to big government. If not, they'll bite you in the rear when you least expect it. And that will be it. Make it short and sweet here. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share us throughout your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or something that's interesting you want to check out, whatever you do, please send your correspondence to Decorum. And I'm going to see. I doubt he has this on, uh, um, on his website. I tried No More Fake News. What I'm going to do, I'll put in the website, nomorefakenews.com, and you can subscribe and get his stuff via email because I know he's been... Um, John Rappaport has been getting issues of um, trying to post it on his website and they've been like censoring him, okay? Thank you, big brother. So we, I can, I'll do that and um, if, you, if you want my email address, I got two, lokiluckenumber3 at gmail.com or lokiluckenumbers03 at protonmail.com. I'll put that in the footnotes as well. If you want to do a donation, hit me at paypal.me forward slash Loki Luck number three and donate to John Rappaport as well. You can do that on nomorefakenews.com. So I'll leave that link on there. And that's it. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the maniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading love. And may your guardian spirits be with you.